Good afternoon, and thanks everyone for uh, coming out. Uh, first, I would like to recognize our board members that are present. Uh, we have President uh, Commissioner Stringfellow, uh, Dr. Foster, and Mr. Battles. Uh, I would like to thank those guys for coming out and supporting me. I would also like to recognize Dr. Brackens, Deputy Superintendent of Academics. She's here in case you have any instructional questions. Well, I know some of you are wondering why I waited so long to release this information. This was strategically done. And as you know, COVID-19 cases are continuing to rise. So I purposely waited until I felt it was the right time to release our plans. I am very pleased with our comprehensive reopening plans. Our central office and school staff have been working long hours to develop and begin implementation of this plan. However, today I announced to my administrative team that we are going to have to change the, the, the direction. The number of COVID-19 cases are continuing to rise each and every day, and that is very alarming. As a leader, I have to make tough decisions, but I do not make decisions that's best for me. As a leader, I make decisions that are best for those who follow me. As superintendent, it is my obligation to protect the safety and well-being of each of our 53,000 students and 8,000 employees. With that being said, I cannot, with strong reservation, put their health and even their lives in jeopardy. Therefore, this afternoon, I am announcing that Mobile County Public Schools will not reopen for students on August the 10th, 2020. We will officially begin our school year on September the 1st remotely for all students. Students will not return to the classroom for at least the first nine weeks of school while we continue to assess the number of cases in our area. After the first nine weeks, based on our numbers, we hope to reopen our schools and continue with our plans to have three options for our students, which are face-to-face, -face, remote, and virtual learning. Our faculty and staff will take the month of August to plan to have professional development and to also deploy devices and Wi-Fi for our students. Everyone will not agree with this decision nor will this road be easy. However, I am blessed to have the best board, administrative team, faculty, and staff, and I know without any doubt that we will continue doing what is best for our students together. Thank you all for coming, and at this time, I would offer some questions. Right, so we, we, we have no plans at this time uh, to lay off anybody. Uh, it's business as, as usual. Everyone will have uh, assignments and duties, um, so we have no plans. Our budget uh, right now looks strong, so we have no plans of laying anyone off. Right, so we don't plan on giving any instructional packets. We did that in the spring when we shut down in, in the spring. Uh, we have uh, ordered uh, several thousand of Chrome Chromebooks, several thousand of Wi-Fi's, wi uh, so we feel like we have enough devices and Wi-Fi's for all of our students. How much is this um, additional, additional cost to the school district? 
Um, I hadn't added all of it up, um, but it's it's in the millions. Uh, you do know we received CARES Act uh, for this project, uh, so we do have some funding for it. Is that going to cover it, or is there going to be any deficit with the school district participation? We, we never get enough money to cover it, uh, so the answer to that question is no. <laughs> Anything else? What's the difference between the remote and uh, virtual school? Excellent question. Virtual, uh, and, and I would ask Dr. Brackens if she wants to uh, jump in, but virtual is when the kids basically go on their own, they log in, uh, is at their own pace. Remote is more structured, uh, the teacher-driven uh, kind of facilitate. Uh, they actually see the teacher uh, through videoing, uh, so that's the major difference. Yes, we had um, a 75-page comprehensive plan, which we uh, don't mind sharing because at some point we will have to deploy that plan, so we don't mind sharing that, that plan. But basically, it, it had three options, face-to-face, um, -face, uh, remote, and, and virtual. Right. So my heart goes out to the parents. I know this is a very difficult time. I am a parent of three uh, students, um, myself and my wife. We work, so I understand the hardship that this put on parents. Um, but as a superintendent, I have to focus on their safety and their well-being, not only for the students, but the teachers the grandparents that the kids go and see, the parents that the kids go and see, I have to take all those things in consideration. Uh, so my heart does go out to the parents, um, but hopefully we can get through this together. Hopefully we can look at the weeks, and if the numbers go down, we will be able to do a face-to-face. -face. As far as fall sports, I know a lot of students and you know, families are looking for schools, football, and some of that. Is any of that gonna be able to go on? Yes, I have been in uh, uh, communication with the Alabama High School Athletic Association, and we're in constant communication, and I think some things might change, uh, so that information will be forthcoming. Is there a prospective uh, a date that you think schools will open back face-to-face? -face? Well, I don't have a crystal ball, so uh, no, I can't give you a, a, a certain date. Uh, we're just gonna assess the situation. Okay. So remote and virtual schools start from September 1st? September 1st, September 1st. absolutely. Yes, the state did a survey, and I think 20% uh, said that they wanted to go virtual, and ours, our local numbers doubled that. So we had double that that said that they wanted to go virtual. All righty. Thank you all.